before we start the class, I just want to talk briefly about a uh, student teacher, what it means. We can talk briefly about student teacher, then we we'll proceed from there. So it goes, okay. And then we can talk about student teacher, then we can talk about the class title. What does it mean when we say, I will release from imprisonment? And what does it mean when we say the ultimate reality? To, to us as Serbians, okay? So when you say student teacher, when you say student teacher, we really, I think I may have mentioned this at the last class, when we, when we talk about student teachers, we talk about the upload, download principle, meaning that when we are reading, as an example, in the master's course or reading anything, we are actually uploading. And when we are teaching, we are actually downloading so we are as we are downloading to you all the listening audience you are in turn uploading when we are and when you talk to somebody else and you propagate to somebody else on the street you are downloading and they are uploading so when you are when we are uploading we are in the seat of a student and when we are downloading, we are in the seat of the teacher. So there is a, it is a continuous flow of upload, download, upload, download. And here it is now. The greater or the more that we download, it increases our capacity to upload. Or put another way, we, you fill, you cannot fill a full cup. You've got to empty the cup in order for it to be refilled. So this is, the, it's like, uh, you know, like the, we call it the net air symbol or the eternity symbol, like an A, but horizontal. It's a continuous upload, download, upload, download. And when we, when we are, so there is a continuous student teacher, student teacher relationship. And you find that we tend to sit in the seat of a student more than we sit in the seat of a teacher. And even though we are teaching, we are still learning from the students. You follow? So it is by way of the students or by way of the questions that we are asked that helps us learn more about how we deliver the information or the knowledge or the doctrine. Okay. So we have student and we have, or oh, not student, or oh, yeah, you have the. You have a question? No, we'll say the sun download. Sorry? The sun, S U N, download. Yeah, it's a very good question. Anything that gives us information or gives us, even when it emits energy, that is a form of download. And we know that the celestial bodies, not, not only the, remember the suns, the stars, the stars, the suns, a very good question. When they emit the energies to this earth plane, they are downloading and we raise our vibratory rates up to the required level, we can receive that download. And when we're receiving that download, that means that we are uploading. So you're 100% right. It's a continuous upload, download, upload, download. You follow? So there's three points to it all. There is you as the student and you as the teacher. The third point is, the, is our actions. Okay, is what we do. So you've got how we think, how we, um, what we do with the information that we have learned. But there's a fourth point. And the fourth point is when we have, we have reached an understanding of what we have learned. And we then elevate to that degree of an instructor, meaning that we are now receiving information from out of this dimension we are we are now receiving out information or as we said before we are uploading 
out formation, that which is from outside of this dimension, or the fourth point, or the tetrahedron. Okay, so you've got three points, one to upload, download, student, teacher, the third point for of our actions, then we will reach, we would gradually, uh, intravenously reach that degree whereby we now are receiving out formation uh, as out structures, which makes the full point, which is a tetrahedron. Okay. There's nothing here. Look, see nothing written here. And we've all heard the saying that knowledge is power, but knowledge is only the knowledge receives its power by of application. So until we apply what we have learned, that the information is just that information, no different from any other book, fiction or non-fiction that's on the on the bookshelf. It's like you driving a car, or you have a car, and this is the most powerful car on the planet, but it's just there on the road, not being not being utilized. And in that state, it's just like another car on the street. But upon ignition, and then upon uh, it being driven, then its potential can be recognized. Go ahead, Zippa. Um, I know you were talking about earlier when you're reaching that instructor level. Um, can you explain, does counter sight tie, tie into that? Do you know what counter sight is like? The ability to see or perceive things in a way that differs from the obvious and the normal perspective um, that could be on the surface of things. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right. Uh, Explain that definition once again, Samal. It just says some very um the counter side can be understood as ability to perceive things in a way that differs from the obvious or commonly accepted perspective. It involves looking beyond the surface of situations to gain deeper alternative insights. Right, yeah. What that basically means is that the student now has heightened his level of perception. Okay, is now raise he now not he or she has reached that degree which is really called an overstanding of what they read they are reading now and they're now seeing things interdimensionally the scrolls that part of that is interdimensional meaning that there comes a point whereby you are reading as we said before mentioned before is is that you have You've written a sentence, but you've got one word, a gap, and another word. And in that gap is out formation. They come, but it is something that we have to grow into. No, we have to grow into that. So now your ability to perceive, because there's only one sense. You heard that there's, we have five senses, and it wiggles down to touch. But even that wiggles down to perception how we perceive things see so what happens then is that your sense of perception heightened to the next degree and you've now able to see beyond you know they call it thinking outside of the box we call it sound right reasoning the reasoning being the highest form of mental mental um mental perception okay it's reasoning uh, reason, another term we, we utilize is circular mental processing. That is reasoning. We have thinking, which is straight line, and we have circular reasoning, which is circular. Thinking, a straight line or mental or square box, that's thinking. Above thinking, we now have reasoning, which is a circular mental processing, meaning that it's infinite. Okay, That's why we call Walt Nawab sound right reasoning or we would go to go back we we'll say the right knowledge right wisdom and the right understanding understand means you're standing looking up that's it you're standing looking up the understanding you reach the degree whereby you now have an overstanding so now you have right knowledge right wisdom and the right overstanding that leads on to sound right reasoning with reason being the highest form of mental processing so you're 
So that term that you utilize, you, you spoke of, and um, mm -hmm. repeat that term again, please, about Pantocide, okay? Yeah, yeah. The, I, mean, I like, yeah, like yeah. that, I like that term there. Maybe Overton is the ability to see or perceive things in a way that are different from the obvious, or yeah. commonly accepted perspective, involves looking beyond the surface of situations to gain deeper alternative insights. Right, yeah. We're going to talk about that later on but you notice how the term the word is, is perception or how we perceive things okay we each and every one of us as individuals perceive things differently you see so why because of how we what we've been uh exposed to in our life you know you heard the saying that a picture can say a thousand words or sorry a person could look at a picture yeah all of us in this room could look at a particular picture and each and every one of us sees some something different or we perceive something different within the picture okay and when we hear this now so when we talk about our, our heightened level of perception that means then that we now seem beyond the box, or we now the cliche is thinking outside of the box. You follow? So you're no longer trapped by person, places, and things. You're now thinking, or you're now processing outside of that. See? But it takes, um, you've got to become the diligent student. And uh, you can read, 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 but without application, it's just mere books okay the application is what brings the words to life okay. or what gives the knowledge its power as our application okay uh just quickly i'd say got a few more people on clubhouse and say rohobad once again welcome let me just stay here that um do you know that it's you all who make the class? We just, we, we just, we just like yourself, student teachers, but it's you all that makes the class. And the thing is, is that we have, we have the race. Uh, I talked to one brother said this to me some time back. He said that even at university level of all the races, we are the ones who don't, we don't ask them, we ask the least questions. So we, so be inquisitive like a, like a child. We was inquisitive. We always ask, what's this, what's that? It seems like as we get older, we no longer question, but we should ask questions from the cradle to the grave. Question, question, question. And as you ask questions, we, the student teachers, we are learning just as you are, and we learn more from your questions just as much as you learn from our answers. Hello? So, like I said before, student, uh, student teacher, we are all in that seat of the student teacher. So um, where is the question meant to take you when you answer questions? It's like a quest, isn't it? Yeah, a quest is like a journey. Mm -hmm. You see, what's the bat? No, let's put it like this. Make it high. Let's put it like this analogy. Life in itself is a journey. No, let me sorry, let me phrase that. Life itself is a journey. But let's look at what's the bat. For some, what's the bat is a journey. For some, Wolstabat is a destination, meaning those of us who have taken that long walk on a short path, we have gone through many schools, and, there's, and as we made the transition from one school to the next, some people, I don't want to use the word fell off, but let's say they left the, the vehicle. Say Wolfsburg is the vehicle. They, they, that was their station and they left. So for them, that particular, like for example, we're in the school of uh, Islam and so on. We're in the school of Islam. And when the master, uh, he did say that, I'm not going to keep in Islam or religion for a long time, blah, blah, blah. And some people, that was it. That was their school and they never continued the journey. So every time there was a transition, people that was some people for many that was their destination and for others it is a journey it is a continual journey even when we cross over to the other side it will always be a continual journey of growth and expansion okay i hope that helped so now, uh, before we continue any questions on clubhouse or zoom 
No questions? Right. Um, yes. Oh, Patricia Harper. Go ahead, Zamalfa. Sorry. I've got a question. Um, not a question, but I'm going to ask. Could you please just ex explain what you've just said? I didn't quite get it. Um, the About the journey. For some, for some, it's a journey, and for others, it's a destination or... That's right. Yeah, can you explain that for me again, please? Sure. Um, right, yes. Uh, yeah, in Wusabat, or life in general, it's, uh, let's take Wusabat, or you could, take it, you could use it as life as well, is a journey. We are, we are on a journey of growth and expansion. The master explained this, I think he said it on the table, or I think it's on the, on the particular scroll. Um, Patarat is called uh, the all expanding. Every what he did mention in the scroll is that there are those amongst us that has a limited expansion rate. They can only expand their mind so far. That's their destination. They've reached their destination point. There are those amongst us who has an unlimited expansion. Mm. For them, life is a journey. You follow? So life itself is meant to be a journey, but some people, for whatever reason, they have reached the pinnacle of their life, and that's it. You see? So um, I hope that made it a bit clearer, Mr. Malta. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> and when we say to... I don't build on them, small little build. When you say uh, uh, a journey, meaning that a journey of continuous learning and growing, you see. And in order, and goes back to the student teacher upload download principle, the more we, in order to learn more, we have to teach. But that's how else will we learn. We learn by way of teaching, by way of our experiences, by way of life. See, in actuality, life is our, sorry, experience, I should say, sorry. Experience is our master teacher. Every experience that we go through in life is our master teacher. This is, is our teacher. Life is our own personal master teacher. We can go into that later on in class. As you mentioned, I'm just going to put you a recap on the previous class that we've done. Uh, we're talking about how the many scrolls of the master are can be likened unto, unto keys. And we said that keys are for locking and unlocking doors. Now, this ties in with the class title, The Art and Science to Our Release from Imprisonment. And the keys lies within our minds. We can go into depth a bit more about that. So in our case, the mental doors is what has imprisoned us. And as each of those doors start to unlock, then we will, we're on our way towards what's referred to as freedom, okay? All we, I'm right, let me just read a little bit here, I've written down here. All we have to do is to unlock these doors, open them, and just walk out of that mental state of confinement. Once liberated, we will be doing greater or equal things than other races. It is then, and only then, we will receive worldwide respect. That's coming from the scroll of the master to put out called Breaking the Spell of Blacks. It's a very, very old scroll. So I could read an excerpt from there. Okay, read this. This is page 36 on the scroll, Breaking the Spell on Blacks. And it reads, the powers and forces of War Nawap, also, and the power and forces of Nawapo are liberation and salvation for Egyptian Moors, Blacks, and will you head people everywhere? Liberation is mental and physical separation from opposing forces and salvation is keeping 
opposing forces away from woolly head people after they have been liberated. Therefore, salvation comes after liberation and is the maintenance and perpetration of liberty, justice, equality, and rightness. Here it is now. Like the other scrolls, this scroll helps to open the prison gate that has your minds locked in. And as the gates of mental confinement opens, ignorance will flee, will flee. And the right knowledge, the right wisdom, and the right understanding will become keeper of your minds. The right knowledge, the right wisdom, and the right understanding are Nawapo. And the Wapo is the spiritual science of all woolly head Nawapian black people throughout the universes, which gives you soul and makes you soul people. That's why the master always says that Wusabat or Wunawap is our spiritual science and it is universal knowledge. And we use the word spiritual science, meaning it is scientific in nature. Anything that's not, everything, if you have a, a, relig a religious system or a spiritual system that is not scientific, then it lacks validity. You follow? And Wolstabat, as we said in many times, that we have Wolstabat and the doctrine is what gives the culture its validity. Okay? Anything that, has, that, that is insubstantial means that the culture will not last. Okay? Any questions at all? Yeah, I've got a question for that. I know um, there's a lot of em emphasis on action with the knowledge and how to act. So um, I've got a question. Um, um, do we come together and act? But when should we act on coming together? Do we come together and act? Or should we... Or should we... Should we should we come together to act or should we come together and act or do we come together and act as in when we gather yeah or should we act on coming together both we should is both both of them are interrelated uh the first thing we need not everyone and how would coming together look like right yeah it's like this Remember, let me say like this. I remember when I used to go to, when I went to college, the teacher said, Your lesson starts when you leave when you leave the um when you leave the classroom. Sure. Meaning your lesson starts when you actually leave the classroom. Yeah. Meaning that you meant to go home and practice what you have learned or go over what you have learned. Then when you come together, when you come together, then we begin to we should put what we have learned together to uh, into into action the, the, not everyone can do it do it can act as an individual some people need to be in a um, in a group but hear this though there's a word to be used we always use which is called synergy which is when two or more forces combine to produce an outcome greater than if done individually when two or more forces combine together to produce an outcome greater than if done individually. Meaning, if we want to make an impact, we have to come together. And they're all, as said, as, meant, as, as said, our strength lies in our unity. Okay. If there's a hundred of us in a hundred different directions on the planet, each doing our own individual thing, individual thing, the power and all the results will not be as great as if we come together. Those hundred people coming together, synergizes their energies and efforts together, the, the results will be exponential times 100. So yes, we need to come together. 
That's how things work. How would that look in Rusa Bat? Would that be like on a business level or within in in what ways? Within the culture? In all directions. In all directions. In all directions. In anything and everything that we imagine to do, we'll be able to do. Because there's there'll be no limitations. As the, as the saying goes, all limitations is self-imposed, you see. The classical story the master always puts out is the Genesis chapter 11 Nimrod story when the people came together. Um, God was kind of asked, well, you know, what's going on? How come these people are doing this and doing that? You see? So when we come together, that's when our, the powers, our powers will start to flourish. Hey, this now. Being that we're in this day, time, and cycle, the forces of natural nature are conspiring to our advantage to our benefit as we read earlier on towards liberation and salvation okay you're welcome brothers um right any more questions before you continue what has zoom any questions Right. Um, there's something that I want to write. Yeah. So we're talking about. Um, uh, I want to read something here called the Out. We said that most of the class title is Art and Science of Arrow Release from Imprisonment Ultimate Reality to the Seconds. I just want to read. An excerpt from the master's sequence called the, the ultimate reality. This is a number 12. And what does it mean? Then I'm going to ask some questions. I've got some questions down I'd like to ask you all. It's no. Look at me, I'll read this first, then I'll ask some questions here. It's got here the ultimate reality. Got some interesting things to say as well later on to them. Okay. Uh, one. Le, this is quite odd. Le an kum a murura khadu a munawa u yanunism. For you all, my beloved children of Wunawa and Yanunism. Two. Nawapo, Nawapians know the know the ultimate way. What is the ultimate way? Anybody? Oh, Correct. Everybody said it. Uh, back. Okay. Well. <laughs> okay. No, Noapians know the ultimate truth. What's the ultimate truth? Huh? The question. What is the ultimate? You said Noapians know the ultimate truth. Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Clubhouse? Anyone in Clubhouse? <laughs> what is the ultimate truth? What the master put it like this. People got that skull there. He said, put it like this. Um, I think it's in. Um, I'm going to talk to you about. Oh, Chima. What was that? Sorry. You said, what is the ultimate truth? Yeah, what's the ultimate truth? I presume it's actual facts. Actual facts. Uh, um, you're on your, uh, hang on, you're jumping. <laughs> that's the, that's the, no. Yeah, that's the no. Dealing with facts. Dealing with facts, correct, right? The master, it's how it talks about, um, it's got here, the workings know the ultimate truth. You put it like this, in one of the scrolls, I think it's um, intelligent design, Intelligent design, divine design, a plot of aliens. It could be that one or uh, the proof in the beginning of the, you know, the front pages. Is, you put it like this. Why believe what you can't prove when you can prove what can, what can be trusted? It's all got to do with proof. Okay. Noapians know the ultimate truth. Noapians know the ultimate facts. Noapians know who know up. Noapians know the ultimate warner. Who is that? Who's the ultimate order? 
The Wapians know the ultimate between positive and negative. The Wapians know you all's ultimate destination. We talked about that earlier on. What is it? What should we aspire to be our ultimate destination? To be a supreme being. Mm. Yes, uh, we see. You're on the right. You're on the. You're on the right track. So it's like man, you got any, You got that ready. Mm. <laughs> but continue, continue. Um, no, I think I just. Uh, I just you, sorry, brother. You, you, you start getting that. Uh, continue. <laughs> Go ahead. As you're saying, I'm just thinking about um the scale from um. Demon, beast, beastiality, human, and you've got to the scale all the way up to um, Supreme Being and Alipa. Yeah. That's, that's what we do. Well done. Yeah, you're, you're on the right track to merge back into Papa or the All. Correct? Yeah. That's 90th, ultimate destination. The Wipings know you all's ultimate fate. What does it mean by fate? The ultimate fate. What is first we have to about what, what do we mean when we say fate? Because if someone says to you, what is fate? Well, Correct. What's gonna happen? Build a bit more easy by probably easy by easy by easy by easy by God given what's gonna happen. Yeah. It's God given what's gonna happen in my work. That's fate. Fate. So yeah. can your fate be altered? Um, some people believe it can be by your own work. Some people believe it's God ordained. Yeah. But what do you think? Um, I think it's most probably God ordained. God ordained? Yeah. So uh, that means that uh, it cannot be changed? I think there's multiple different areas which you could go into which people could call fate. And that's going to be determined by your own actions, which line you're going down. 100%. So if you meant to go down a particular line yeah. and, you, and you made the decision, of you got will to change that destination you have changed your fate correct so yeah. now you've got a new a new, new fate fate yeah. based upon the the, the decisions that you made you made okay yeah. that fate can it be conducive or unconducive um, i think it can be unconducive um, but it could be conducive. It depends on your situation. It depends on what you're doing. Correct. So um, you made a choice. You've gone down a particular path. Mm. And just by way of the, your decisions, you change the direction that you should have been going. Mm. And now you have inherited a new fate. Yeah. Okay. It does, you may have, no, you, you will experience on that new destination. But that path you've taken can also bring you back on track. You just had to experience that fate. You see, good or bad, you had to experience that. Mm -hmm. Like you're driving down the motorway and you or you're driving down the road and you decide in your know, infinite wisdom to take another turn and you know. You, and you end up in the cul de sac. Then they have to turn back. But had you stayed on the part on that particular road, you're going to take that turn, you altered your fate. Now you have to come back and you're now back on track. Mm -hmm. So even though you change your fate and you, you change the direction you should be going in, even though you change the direction, it doesn't make it good or bad. It just experiences, it's just that experiences and we meant to learn from our experiences. Mm -hmm. By learning by our experiences, that's how we grow, elevate, okay? Mm -hmm. But what that's about, thank you. Okay, 10, the number nine, Tassu represents the true black positive in absolute natural nature, Tassan, the nine, 11. The number six, Satu represents the untrue White negative in absolute unnatural nature, Satan, the sixth, 12. The circle or cycle of the ultimate called by way of Wum Pa Shanan Shalil Rayet 
Kawantan Shalir Sayim Maram, the ultimate, the circle of ultimate existence of divine order. The circle of ultimate existence of divine order, positive energy, mind, and body. The, the circle of ultimate existence of divine order. The, the, the ultimate existence of divine order is coming from what we call Pa'ud, the all. Or we use the term Kalei Makwana, the omniverse, or all, um, all existence. Positive energy, mind and body, 13. The circle or cycle of ultimate disorder. Chaos, negative energy, mind and body. 14. The ultimate order of the circle is also called the circle of cosmos bliss hatha. And 15. And the ultimate disorder of the circle is called the circle of chaos mischief. Chaos and the ultimate circle of chaos is also called primordial chaos. And primeval chaos means infinite material matter formless disorder. When the master teacher uses the term chaos as in primordial chaos, we shouldn't, as a differentiation between primordial chaos and the, the ultimate disorder of the circle is called the circle of chaos mischief. So do not, we've got to make a differentiation. There is disorder, which is chaos, and there's what we call primordial chaos, which is, he explains it here. He's got here, and cosmos means infinite material matter in this one universal order. 17, 18, and primeval chaos means infinite material matter, formless disorder, meaning before matter has come together, the word is aggregation and amalgamation. Before matter has come together or created or created form to produce whatever is needed in existence or in creation, it's in a state of disorder or not sorry in a state of chaos not disorder disorder is when things are out of balance with natural nature so disorder is unnatural nature okay and when you use the word chaos we talk about as in natural nature talking about formless disorder things that uh, there's no amalgamation or aggregation of matter 19 that is to say the weapons material matter things Something without form, figure, some or shape is no thing, nothingness. I'm going to stop there because I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going away from the class cycle, right? But the, so when we say the ultimate um, reality to the Sabians, meaning that it's our mind that we need to elevate. And once our minds elevate to that degree, we would then get as what we refer to, we then get on track or back in with faith and our ultimate reality which is um to be with to go back into what we call part of now second oh we are part of part of already yeah we we are we are we are all part of we're all part we're all a part of Part odd, but we need mental recognition of that. When we say mental recognition, what we mean is we have elevated our minds to that state beyond the physical, where we now have we made that direct conscious link by way of our conscious mind and our subconscious mind, or our physical and non-physical self. We are we now become aware of both of those polarities. We've made that connection. So how would one do that? Through breathing? Um, is that through the time? Is that through the back? Act and all? 100%. Uh, when we say how, do, we first 
we do we need to have the knowledge we've got to have we've got to know the science once we know the science then we could apply the art otherwise if we just chanting or if we just doing things without the science or the knowledge behind me doing it not to say it's ineffective but it's just saying that we now step into the realm of religiosity we spoke about this last week we step into the realm of religiosity if we don't know the, the science behind the art that's we, that's why we call it the art and science of anything see so we have many classes on the art of science so okay welcome so much so the science the art is an application towards our freedom the science is is the know-how or the knowledge behind the application and the question is, what do we mean when we say imprisonment? Anybody, when we say, uh, um, what's the cost of cost power? <laughs> when we say imprisonment, what do we mean by that? When we say that our minds has been, or we say the art and science of our, when we say the art and science of our release from imprisonment, what do you mean by that? What do we mean when we say imprisonment? I presume when someone's locked up, yeah, you know, or controlled. All right, someone who's locked up. In this case, is our minds which has been tampered with. Yeah, has been locked up or imprisoned, chained but, up. Yeah, but those chains. How does that matter? But those chains, here it is, are mental or illusionary. To so we need. To break the illusion, and we break the illusion first and foremost by recognition. Once we recognize a thing, once we once we recognize a thing, once we are aware of a thing, we become conscious of this thing. Then we could take the necessary steps towards liberation. Then, which is which is being liberated from those oppos opposing forces of nature. And once we are liberated, then as you read earlier on, salvation comes, keeping those opposing forces away after liberation. Okay. And also by the okay, so go ahead. Yeah, just what's about you know when we, we when you talk about I've been stuff I've been watching and talk about the matrix and we're talking about the third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension. When you're talking about um, our mind being imprisoned. Do you guys believe in the matrix that we are minds is in a, a level of plane of existence? And then when we're talking about breaking our, um, the shackles of our mind, we can elevate to another dimension, another level of plane of existence? Or do you, are we just all in just one plane of existence? Okay. Uh, we are actually, in actuality, we are in multiple dimensions. Multiple, or we are surrounded by multiple dimensions. And you're one hundred percent right. Is that the um, we have been purposely indoctrinated to keep us locked into person, places, and things. And what's the bat is the ingredients to help us break out of that mold or that, or they call it a matrix. Uh, the term they use. So um, you answered your own question, uh, Samantha. Um, that uh, is something that has been perpetrated to prolong our own incarceration or captivity. The thing is that we said earlier on in class, uh, at the beginning, is that the forces of natural nature is conspiring to our advancement. The nine ether forces is interpenetrating this Earth's atmosphere and the more we gravitate towards Wolstabat and work, we would, uh, the spell would be broken and uh, then we'd be free, we will have a free and liberated mind. It is an inevitability. Like all things, the more we apply, the more we will receive. The more we give, the more we receive. We'll talk about this later on. Sorry, just one more question. Okay. You know, when you talk about, like, in, in, the, in the scripture says, um, you too much um, 
you, you're too much spiritual, but you're not earthly good. When you're talking about naive for being and we're talking about um, prism of the mind, what does that look like? What are we, how are we supposed to live and what are we, what is our characteristics as nine ether beings on a practical level and on a spiritual level as well? So we can understand what you mean. So I can understand when you say breaking our minds, our mental minds from prison. What does that, what does that look like? Right. The, uh, that, what that looks like, the best example we can give is uh, when we had the land in Eton and Georgia, Tamare, that we came together and we built, we had basically had our own Egyptian village. Um, when we come together is when we, the results of us come together will be what we are producing, see, visibly producing. That would be the result of our unification. You know, that would be the result of nine ether in full effect. So like coming together, but if some of us can't come together, we're all living in different parts. Are you saying that it's the same um, mindset, what we think, and we, the advancement of the nine ether um, beings? Can we still do that or do we have to physically be together or we can do it mentally? Okay, we need, we need to do it both mentally and physically. We have to come together. Remember we, the, remember we used the term um, synergy. When two or more forces combined, to produce an outcome greater than if done individually. We will never produce great outcomes as if done on an individual basis. We have to come together. It has to be in order. Uh, this, this is just how natural nature works. You know, you have different elements come together. Uh, the word we use is aggregation and amalgamation. The, all these elements come together and they produce, for example, the physical body. Like if, for example, we have one, uh, like when the, um, when the sperm fertilizes the egg, they have to come together. And when they come together, then what they call it, um, is it meiosis, that the term, when things start to split and replicate and replicate and replicate, the same thing like us as individuals. We all have to come together uh, I think the term is again synergy. We have to come together if we want to produce great results, and the results will be the uh, the visible actions of our unification. And being that we are nine ether beings, then all these nine ether forces come together. What can't we achieve? And what will happen is, uh, as you read in the doctrine of Wolfsabat, and we live in the Wolfsabat. We would emanate that from our beings and people will be attracted to us or we to them. It's a natural process, natural nature. Is that like, so we have to form new habits together as family? That's right. First, all habits has to be first as an individual and as a collective, okay? Form new habits as individuals and as a collective, okay? So now, there's no question. Oh, okay. So is that long term becoming a community that we all live together, or what? What does that mean in long term? Yeah, that's right. We need to have. We definitely need to have a community level living or communal living community, common unity. That's right. Within the word community, you hear the word unity. That's the operative word. That's right. Hundred percent right there, Samantha. Just one more question. <laughs> so, is that the same as Pan Africanism? You know, when they are trying to, like we say, all black people don't have a nation, we don't have a government. Are we going to do that as well, or is it just more of a community? No, this is a uh, wolf about is we are uh, a record. We are uh, what the master Jesus calls it, an autonomous. Hang on, hang on, let me find one. Uh, here, yeah. At the back of the scroll, it's got here. This is like an old scroll. It's got here the United. The Wapian Nation, got here, and let's read it from here. Yamasee Creek, Seminole, Washita, a government of retained sovereigns. We're retaining our sovereignty, self rulership, indigenous Aboriginal natives. Independence is June 26, 1992. So, this is what we are, that's why we call ourselves the United Sabian, we call ourselves the United Sabian. Nation worldwide, 
United sorry, United Sapiens worldwide. Yeah. yeah. And we're specifically sovereign in uh, Hague as well. You can put that number, the number on the back of the book. Yeah. The code, the immediate. Yeah. Independence got the code number here is 215993 So we are, this is uh, our objective. It well, it, we are a sovereign nation, okay. indigenous. Okay, so that is, uh, that is a uh, that is going to be. Uh, that is definitely going to happen. Uh, thanks. Oh, sorry. I hope that does that, that answer your question, Samalta. Yes, thank you. Because I was just thinking. Sorry, <laughs> when oh, we're yeah. talking, about, you know, um, obviously we're in the matrix. We're talking about, you know, we all have to have a job. We're talking about the money system, all those kind of things. So when you say we are a sovereign nation, if we go in to do business in the future, do we fall under that sovereign nation? Could we be that like, be protected as a sovereign? Under that, under that, or can you can you just elaborate on that a little bit more, please? Sure. Yeah, we definitely definitely will, will be protected under um, our own government, uh, our own uh, canons. Yes, um, we will be. When you say sovereign, you talk about self governing or autonomous. And the master often said is that we should um, we should do what do you call it international trade. And Sabians to be amongst the richest people on the planet. At the time, he said, "No, Wapians should be amongst the richest people on the planet." This is what this is the the level of mindset that we should be adopting, okay? and working for, of, and by each other, buy from each other, and sell to the world. Yeah. Fantastic, because a lot of spiritual, you know, or I know you guys are not an organization as such, but because I'm a business person. And so when you say that, that's more what I believe in as well, that, you know, so it's, it's encouraging that that's what you guys teach. Thank you very much for answering the questions. Appreciate it. We've got also the constitution as well, which wants to the rule. Constitution goes into depth as to also seek out those, said so, so straight the book. That goes in depth. That's what Master was saying as well about the autonomy. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so we got our own. Uh, we have our own constitution. We have our. Own, we have a spell called the set the record straight. Written a few years, many years back. Um. That that pertains to uh, our sovereign and our what we are, uh, or us as an autonomous sovereign nation, self governing. And Panda Babianana is our president. You see. So, okay. So, I just want to read this here. So, question is, what is the methodology needed to become self-autonomous? The answer, first and foremost, we have to acknowledge that the society that we live in has been so constructed that whoever ascribes or subscribes to this failing society will surely fail. And the master should put in many different scrolls. What comes to mind is um, the Vivian scrolls and um, uh, uh, the year 2000, what to expect. He said in there that just how the other, um, what do you call it, empires, European empires, look great in their day and time, and then they fail, this present new Babylon is failing and is going to fail and we ascribe and subscribe to a failing society we are too are going to fail okay uh, brother what was it like one two so when you say subscribing to the society what what do you mean exactly okay that means that that basically means that not setting up our own infrastructure, not working together as a people or as or as a collective, you know what I mean? Um, that's that's what it is. The same way how Indians they work together, or the, the Indian community they all kind of hang out. You could go to 
part of even around Croydon. You now there's an area that a lot of Indians live here. You may see uh, a, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of Chinese Chinese live in this area. The, the Jews live there. There's nothing stopping us from doing the same thing, having our own education. When you say own own, own education, meaning an educational system constructed by us for us, by one of us for all of us. Like the master teacher, he wrote these books. He's the writer of one man wrote these books for all of us. So what we should be doing is taking or absorbing what we have learned and just replicating it. See, so you write books, he write books, she wrote, we all write books pertain to our own structure. We set our own schools, we set our own curriculum. I remember listening to a tape and a sister, uh, this, this is from the class in, in Jamaica, and brother there, he's got a class there, and he, the sister said um, that, why don't the master, someone asked the question, why don't the master do this? Why don't the master do that? Why don't the master write a book on this subject or that subject? What we should be doing is taking what we have learned and as ontologists of time, utilizing those forces of natural nature to let me let somebody write a book on what we should be eating and what we shouldn't be eating. What how to set up a business, a construction business, how to set up a, a whatever business. This is what is meant when we regard, regard ourselves as ontologists of time. We are in this day, time and cycle, and based upon what we have learned, go out and do for self and kind, you know, build for self and kind. You know what I mean, we, what we've learned here in the West, mm -hmm. whether you're in the West here, or whether you're in Africa, or wherever we are, within the, um, the, the, the word using diaspora, wherever we are, we to utilize what we have learned, come together, and capitalize on that and build. You know, you may be a good uh, architect, you may be a good carpenter, you may be a good coach, you may be a, a good builder, whatever, whatever. Come together, pool or amalgamate our abilities and capabilities and grow and build those pyramids once again, because it's within us. Only we know, only we have the, uh, that knowledge of how to build the pyramids. The only thing is we just need to wake up to that actuality. You follow? Oh, go ahead. So, um, and as I was talking about set the record straight, was that the score? Yeah. Um, I know in that score, I um, read a bit of it, um, it was talking about Old York, when Old York took um, this, I think, yeah, they sailed the tides and it was going into more the Yamasi, Yamasi and Creek natives. Yeah. Are they tribes and how do they relate to us? And that is that to deal with the constitution as well? The, um, the, the tribe, so, again, so, uh, so, so, uh, so I missed that, so I, well, I wasn't paying attention. So. Is the Yama, Yamasi and the native Creeks part of our tribe, our tribe as a sovereign nation? And what does it mean to be a sovereign nation? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. At the time, the monk was saying that, um, that they are. Yeah, they're all part of the tribe. You know, they're all part, part and parcel of the tribe. You know, I mean, you know, as Native Americans, the Yamasee, Creek, Seminole, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But right now, in twenty twenty four, as we stand, the master says we are first and foremost Africans. What the Bible uses, those who are of the spirit of Re, the sun, you see. So, first and foremost, we are part of that. I mean, to about sovereign just means self governing, autonomous. Okay. So, we're of the spirit of the sun. That's right. Uh, just means those who are of the spirit of the sun. And we say the sun, we use the word Re, we talk about the etheric sun, you see. We are of that because we have the sun heat genes contained with inside of us. Okay. That there is a literal sun, a black sun inside of us that emanates outward. So is the etheric sun, does it 
Does it have a name? Is it? Oh. They say, oh, we call it Raye. Raye. Yeah, we spirit. call it Raye. Yeah, it's it's a physical Shamash. Shamash, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, you know something? I'm going to take this time out to relay something here. Uh, right here. Last class, he's talking about this particular book, um, this particular book here, The Master Key System, by this guy called Charles F. Hanel. Highly recommended to get this book. The Master Key System, Charles F. Hanel. You can go on YouTube, type in YouTube, The Master Key System, and come up, and you, you will be able to, it's 24 parts, and you're able to hear the audio on YouTube. Very, very good book. This particularly, this guy here, Charles F. Hanel, H A A N E L, Hanel, the master key system. This guy, he was a Freemason, but the information inside this book is coming from the Egyptian mystery system. He studied the Egyptian, you could tell, he's not saying I studied the Egyptian mystery system, but when you read it, you could tell that this guy studied the Egyptian mystery system. And you'll find in the scrolls, the master teacher, it, what the master teacher says, it, or what he says here, correlates what the master teacher is saying. A very, very good book worth um, purchasing and digesting. Now, I want to take this time out. Before you go, oh, you go on, can I oh. get the, the name of the, the author of that book? The yeah. Book, Master Key System? Yeah, it's the guy's name you say, the brother's going to ask it. Charles F. Hanel, H A A N E L. Charles F. Hanel. You go on Amazon. And if you go in, uh, if you go on YouTube, tap in the master key system, it will come up and you be able to, it's 24 parts on the, you know, uh, 24 parts uh, on YouTube and each part lasts about 14, 15 minutes. You mean that six and a half hour video? <laughs> something like that, yeah, 24 parts, something like that, yeah. yeah. I'm only on the part, well actually I, I uh, got to part 11 or 12, but then I had to go back and um, but we could read excerpts from here today and it's very very informative highly recommended right so before we go into this book you know i want to do i want to take this time out to highlight a scene from a movie called everybody heard the guy called bruce lee heard it's a movie called enter the dragon there's a scene in it, the opening scene, it's called the monk scene. You could go on YouTube and tap in the monk scene and it'll come up. And the dialogue is very profound. Um, when you hear it, you know that Bruce Lee wrote this dialogue. So I had to kind of, I want to read it out and break it down and see how it ties in. Okay. So, So this is a dialogue that Bruce Lee himself wrote. So we have to say to ourselves, at what level of attainment did Bruce Lee himself achieve or was striving to achieve to write such a dialogue? Now here it is. So the monk, so it's a scene where Bruce Lee comes up and he says, teacher, this monk is his master teacher. Because you know that in China, not any everybody is a teacher or a she fool. The abbot or the guy who's on top, he is the teacher or the master teacher. When I say the master teacher, think of Pana Babi Nanan as we read it, okay? So this is what the monk says. The first thing it says, I see your talents are beyond the mere physical level. Your skills are now at the point of spiritual insight. So obviously the monk could see that, well, he's, he's making an observation, so he, the monk, was obviously at that level and able to look at the individual 
to determine a seed that your talents are beyond the mere physical level. Your skills are now at the point of spiritual insight. This can be likened to Pan the Noon saying, I can see that you have a good understanding of the doctrine and now teaching as an instructor. Pan the is saying that to your soul. He's there in the audience, he's hearing you how you teach, and he says to you, Zamal Tat, sister or Zamal brother, I can see that you are no longer just a mere instructor. You now elevate it to the degree of an instructor, okay? Because you have a good understanding of the doctrine. Okay, the monk, he says this, I have several questions. The monk wants to find out if Bruce Lee has the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the skills and talents that he possesses. He wants to find out more. Okay, let's see what he knows. I can see what he's doing. I can see the art, but let's hear the science behind the art. They ask him a question. This is profound. What is the highest of technique that you hope to achieve? Part of Abinon says to you, what's the highest of teachings you expect to receive? What do you say? Anybody? Part of Babylon says to you, what's the highest of teachings you expect to receive? Go ahead, go. I got a lot in your seat. <laughs> Surely that changes depending on what you've been exposed to. So, yeah, you know, just depending on what you've been exposed to in life, that will change, I'd imagine. It's, but if Father Babi knows that you, what's the highest of teachings you expect to see? What what, me personally? Yeah, you personally. Say, so you, you know, Father says, you can see that you do a good. Okay, I don't know. You can see here, this part of the hair. Respect for each question again. Um, what is the highest of teachings that you expect to receive? From him or just in life? In, in, in life. Oh, oh. You don't know yet. Okay. Keep the, keep the thought in mind and the question, what's the highest of teachings you expect to receive? And I hear this now. It ties in. With, 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 so anyway, so the monk says to Bruce Lee, uh, I have several questions. What's the highest of technique that you hope to achieve? Bruce Lee answers, to have no technique. <laughs> the highest of technique he expects to achieve. In his works, Bruce Lee said this, said like this, before I studied the martial arts, a punch was just a punch and a kick was just a kick. Now that I'm studying the martial arts, a kick is no longer a kick and a punch is no longer a punch. Now that I have studied the martial arts, a kick is just a kick, a punch is just a punch. So now hear this now. Pa'anabab Yanan, Yanan says to you, what is the highest of teachings you expect to receive? There's nothing that you can teach me that I don't already know. Isn't that the highest? There's nothing you can teach me that I don't already know. Because why is that? Because well, I already know. There's nothing you can teach me that I don't already know because all learning is remembering. 100% right. Wolfsabat is really a remembering tool mm. as it is a learning tool. Mm. The highest of teachings you can expect to receive mm. is there's nothing you can teach me that I don't already know or possess because everything has been pre-encoded in our DNA. They call it junk DNA. Does that tie into fate? Fate, fate as in pre-encoded, yeah, pre-encoded, out formation. The highest of teachings. What is the highest of teachings you expect to receive? There's nothing you can teach me 
that I don't already know or possess. All we need to know, all we need to, all, all that needs to happen is for us to be switched on. That's all it is. But as we know that in order for you to reach that stage, that stage of saying, what's the highest of techniques you hope to achieve? To say to have no technique means you had to have gone through the 36 chambers of Shaolin and but <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you had to go through the 36 chambers of Shaolin to come outside of the other side to say to realize a kick is just a kick and a punch is just a punch. Because before you started, you went into the first chamber, a kick was just a kick and a punch was just a punch. Then you've gone into the chambers of Shaolin, the first chamber, and then you got taught how to punch, how to block, da 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 da. You've gone through, come out the other side. Then you begin to realize as you've gone through the chambers, a kick is no longer a kick, a punch is no longer a punch. And after passing the 36th chamber, you've come out in 3 and 6 and 9, isn't it? Go and watch some more Kung Fu with them um, Wu Tang movies, you know what I mean? <laughs> same way, you come out the same way you went in. No. You come out with right knowledge, yeah, right yeah. wisdom, and the right understanding. You know what I mean? You really come out. The pendulum has swung back the other way. So you come in knowing nothing. You've gained a dependent string, you gained a lot of teachings. You reach that pinnacle and it's swinging back. The difference is you, you realize now that you have the wisdom, you have the right knowledge, the right wisdom and the right understanding to know now that there's nothing you can teach me that I don't already know or possess. Mm -hmm. But you had to reach that height of awareness to have that acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. This is what the monk said after that. Good. <laughs> That's what he said after that. He said, to have no technique. The monk says, good. So obviously the monk, he, he knows, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. He's got the knowledge. You know what I mean? He knows that the high, he knows the highest of the high. That's why he's Shifu, teacher. Okay. And the monk says, what are your thoughts when facing your opponent? We'll come into also about in a minute. Don't worry about that. What are your thoughts when facing your opponent? There is no opponent. Why is that? Because the word I does not exist. There is no ego, no me, myself, or I. Somebody asks you a question. You no longer you don't need to think because you know already. You don't think in terms of me, myself, and I, but you think in terms of we. Interesting scene, isn't it? <laughs> and you've got to say, hang on, there's no ego, just no me, myself, and I, there just is. That's it, there just is. And um, move eh? define is his existence. <laughs> That's it. Good. Okay, because he said that, because he said that, I wouldn't want to read the book. My mind would read the book because he said it. I knew someone said that. I knew these, you know, I wouldn't say wise guy, but I know there'd be someone in the, in the, who, uh, who's attained the heights of 36 chambers of Shaolin. Let me um, read something to you from that. This particular scroll. Um, yeah, okay, let me. Um, this is not the one I wanted to read from, but it could be. Um, no, this is not the one I wanted to read, uh, but. Yeah, he, I, I said it anyway. It's um, is is existence. I'm not gonna find it. In my head, I know that answer. Is it is existence? When you say um, when you say we use the term 
There's no ego, no me, myself, I. There just is. Is, is existence. That's it. And it's got here. I learn by way of your questions, which makes me a student. So as a teacher, the teacher learns from the student by way of the questions coming through the student. That makes the teacher a student. Just as much the student is, just as much as the student is a student to the teacher. The student is also a student to the students. Okay? It's a circle within a circle within a circle. You know that, 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 again, the, net, the eternity symbol, it's like that. He goes on to say, Bruce goes on to say, um, when my opponent expands, I contract. And when he contracts, I expand. And when there's an opportunity to hit, I don't hit. It hits all by itself. You no longer have to think to answer the questions. Whatever question a person asks, you are able to answer it. And not only that, as they are answering the question, you are learning and adding more to the answer because of the fact that all is. Negating the fact that you're not thinking to ask the question does not fall in the mental realm. To get that true answer. That's right. What you are doing is you're no longer thinking of the answer, it just comes. Okay. From the mental realm. And the world, how much information is in the mental realm? A lot. Infinity. Infinity, correct. A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> or infinity, infinite. There is nothing, again, that goes back to the question. What do you say? Um, what's the highest of teachings you expect to receive? And we said, there's nothing you can teach me that I don't already know or possess. Like you said, you've made that connection to the mental reservoir, where all thought forms are. There's no need to think now, because it just is. So, even with that thought, the mental realm, yeah, on the fourth plane, yeah. So, physical, tell me, better uh, force, spiritual pain, mental pain, then after the mental plane, bring around, bring around, bring around, there's obviously the higher realms of thought. That's so oh. then you still be getting, you still be getting what's it called? Ah, not intuition, it's just what's it called? Intuition? Intuition mm. through your through, through your thought plans. That's what I said earlier when we talked to the sun. Yeah, we can, yeah. You can talk to the sun just as how the sun is, or let's say, I would say talk, we can communicate to the sun mentally just how the sun can is, communi is constantly communicating to us. Because mm -hmm. the sun is alive, is a living entity. Mm -hmm. And those rays of sun, and the good thing you said that, You see the sun, you know, I'm seeing the, the high roof picture of the sun and those hands coming down. You got the sun, you got them hands coming down, and it got like a hook there. That sun can be likened unto our solar plexus with those emanations coming out. And whoever comes in your presence will be attracted to those rays coming out. They're able to feel those forces coming out. How can you protect yourself from energy of people? <laughs> yeah. Again, that do you know that um, the protection is really the highest, which is a shock. But 
again, that is something that needs to be developed. You know, a shock needs to be developed. Or those energies that are emitting from your heart seat needs to be developed. And the simplest, you know, there are many, the message to put like this, we have a array, an, an array of options at our disposal. Meaning not just one thing, but one thing you can do is the breathing. Consciously breathing. Or, but when you, when I say consciously breathing, not just breathing in and out, but using our powers of imagination or, a, or, a, or our powers of focusing our attention on our heart seat. Because the forces that emanates from the heart seat is more powerful, or the electromagnetic forces is more powerful than those forces that emanate from the brain, or the electromagnetic radiation from the brain, more powerful from the heart seat. Okay. Now, um, with that being said, uh, let me just ask if any any questions on um, Clubhouse or Zoom. No questions. Okay, let's continue. Right, I want to read an excerpt from this scroll here called the Master Key System. And very interesting. Like I said, there's 24 chapters to this book. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just read. Um, actually, I've got. I've got Oh, right, I'm gonna read from here on the phone here. And it, it's got here. This you can find it here. I'll read it somewhere. Okay, it's a very, very interesting book. And we'll start from one. It says here. This, on this first part one, there's about 40 odd sections for here. 45, not really all 45. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read it, just a few. One, that much gathers more is true on every plane of existence, and that loss leads to greater loss is equally true. You know, we said earlier on that in order for us to accumulate more knowledge, we have to give what we know. We have to download what we have uploaded. You follow? If we don't, if we don't do that, then we won't be able to hold much, won't be able to accumulate more information. So in order to accumulate, we have, in order to receive, we have to give. Okay? And as we give, we receive. It's a natural it's that way the master says you're taught so you must teach. That's right. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, the reason for that is because when you are teaching, you're bringing in, the bring, I like to say that when you're teaching, you bring the words to life, but it's the application also that brings it to life. Okay? There are people who teach, but don't believe what, they, what, what they're teaching. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you might have a fitness instructor, you know, or um, what do you call it? Uh, um, a guy who he's like a fitness instructor. He he's a like a lecturer in fitness, you know, or a doctor, for example, a medical doctor. But he don't he don't he don't take the tablets that he's prescribing to the to the patients. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? What he no he does he will give you the tablet, but when when he, when he broke up, he just go to the herbalist. You know what I mean? To, to get the idea, right? Actually, that's stuff. But he, he can't tell you that because he'd be struck off. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> we say, so, so there's some people who teach that they believe what they're teaching. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is shit. Okay. Shoot. Two, mind is creative. My mind's thinking ahead, and you can see something in a minute. Two, mind is creative and conditions, environment, and all experiences in life are the result of our habitual or predominant mental attitude. 
One is creative and conditions that we create to ourselves, the environment that we live in, and all experiences in life. Everything that we experience in life are the result of our habitual or predominant mental attitude. Basically, what we are thinking predominantly is what shapes our reality. All these people, all of us in the room today, we may, we may we would, we, each and every one of us has a different reality that is real to us. Why? Because of what we are thinking. Okay, our thoughts create our world. So is that to do with our habits? We do we become our habits too? Is our thoughts habitual? That's right. But just because habits, you have to remember that it's a polarity. Habits can be agreeable and or disagreeable. You see, yeah. we need both for our growth and expansion. Okay. We learn from the disagreeable just as much as we learn from the agreeable. Okay. Like a pendulum skin, polarity. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Three, the attitude of mind necessarily depends upon what we think. Therefore, the secret of all power, all achievement, and all possession depends upon our method of thinking. Read that again. The attitude of mind necessarily depends upon what we think. Therefore, the secret of all power, mental, physical, or spiritual power, all achievement, what we achieve in life, what we, uh, what we have attained, and all possession depends upon our method of thinking. Four, this is true because we must be before we can do, and we can do only to the extent that we are, and what we are depends upon what we think. Go ahead, Samuel. So, um, I'm going to speak to the mic so everyone could, okay. could benefit from the question. Okay. Oh, um, with that being said, can um, so actors can they disassociate themselves, and um, can you really act? That's a very good question. The thing about actors, or uh, acting actors, is that they are taking on different personas or personalities, and they can get trapped in that fictitious personality that that person who they're portraying can become them and they lose touch with their real self. You know what I mean? That's the dilemma there, isn't it? The guy who, who, who takes on a role as a murderer or whatever, whatever, because you know, they have to make it as real to themselves as it is to the viewers. I mean, if he, if he's not a good actor, then you won't see him in many movies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean <laughs> what about that? Comes in? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so um, yeah. So you have to be careful. So you see, so they hear this though. The character that they are portraying as actors is written by someone else. And the dude who is written right in that, he could be part of the the Illuminati Illuminati Society, oh, and this no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if they, they want to make a movie, and this person could have this type of character, and the guy or the the actors got to put make that make that movie as real or make the character as real as it can be, and you say Samuel Jackson's not acting in Django. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? This is <laughs> anyway, five. It's true, isn't it? I mean, something five. Good actor. Five. We cannot express powers that we do not possess. The only way by which we may secure possession of power is to become conscious of power. And we can never become conscious of power until we learn that all power is from. Within. Was it something if we can? Uh, okay. Listen to this now. There is the highlights of it. There is a world within, a world of thought and feeling and power, of light and life and beauty. And although invisible, its forces are mighty. I'm going to continue reading. I'm going to highlight something here. It came to me this afternoon as I was reading this. Seven, the world within is governed by mind, it's mental. 
When we discover this world, we should find the solution for every problem. Problem could be a question, but because you have taken that journey inward, there's no teachings, there's nothing you can teach me that I don't already know or possess. Because I've made that link to the world within. When we discover this world, we shall find the solution for every problem, the cause for every effect. And since the world within is subject to our, our control, all laws of power and possession are also within our control. But it says, since the world within is subject to our control, up to a certain degree. Let me just read that section again. So the world within is governed by mind. I'll talk about the world within in a minute. When we discover this world, the world within, we shall find the solution for every problem, the cause for every effect. So now it's called causation, meaning that we create the cause to create a cause to make an effect. Okay. And since the world within is subject to our control up to a certain degree, all laws of power and possession are also within our control. Everything is subject to law, but up to a certain degree. Okay. Now, you want to ask a question? Uh, that natural law. Natural law, yeah. So the physical and the phys physics of law, yeah. Emanating from natural support. Uh, okay, it's a natural law, yeah? So if natural law exists within us, it's not natural nature. Mm. What's it? Because obviously external factors include this, you know, External factors being that influences. Oh, right, yeah. Yes, exactly. that influences if natural nature. So I'm saying it in terms of like if you leave natural nature as it is, will it be then an influence? Obviously, because humans have to take plants and plant seeds all over the bloody. Like, so yeah, the plants should be here, so forth. Yeah. Using that analogy, meaning that if the seed was left where it was, yeah. Would that be self-sustained by itself? Or because humans take out seeds and plant like Australia and then plant like London and then plant like America. Yeah, like potato, for example. Mm. Television and island, right? Right. So therefore, what I'm saying is the point I'm making is when things are left alone naturally, yeah, things emanate naturally. Right, yeah. So about like the influence of man or any other factors, would that be sustaining for natural value or what's meant to be? That's right. Uh you're one hundred percent right. Really, um <clears throat> the reason why certain foods are grown in a particular country or environment is because it's meant to be grown there by way of natural nature. And when they take it out of that environment and place it in another environment that in an environment or a climate that's unconducive, then that is a disruption of natural nature. Like when they take any animal out of captivity, they take a tiger, which is lives in, in a tropical country, and they place it in London Zoo, they have now disrupted the natural order of things. They've gone against natural nature, you see. So even in terms of food products, you see, the food, the food really that we should be consuming is the food that's grown in the environment in which we live. You see. So if we we all like yama banana, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, but by the time it, we meant to be eating those type of foods in the environment that it's been grown in. See. And, but conversely, we should also be eating foods that is conducive to our DNA. You know, certain foods that is not really conducive to our DNA. That really we shouldn't really be eating. But here in the West, we have to take the best of the worst. You know what I mean? We have to make good what we can here until that time arrives when we can leave and go back to our natural environment and eat the foods or drink the drinks or walk the soil that our ancestors walk, ate, and drank in. I mean, that would be more conducive to our um, upliftment or embodiment 
or development as a people and as a race and thinking, everything that goes with it. Want to say something? See, um, you was on the subject of control earlier, and I wanted to um, ask, um, you know, your involuntary actions. Yeah. Um, what is that controlled by? It's kind of a two part question. Mm. Um, so, what are your involuntary actions controlled by? And I know breath or your fat with the fact. Um, the breath is in a state of involuntary and voluntary. Mm. So, um, is that your conscious link or gateway to the spiritual and connection with the involuntary actions? Right, yeah. The involuntary actions and our voluntary actions. The voluntary actions is controlled or by way of the conscious mind, and the involuntary actions is governed by of the subconscious mind and also the forces of nature. Okay. Both of them are in unison with each other. The more powerful is the subconscious, because the subconscious is is in communication with the world within, the conscious with the world without. Now, let me just, I'm going to expand on the world within and world within. It doesn't say it in this book, but because we have the right knowledge, Baba, we know what it, we can expand upon it. So, I'll read seven again and go to eight. The world without, I'll read seven again. The world within is governed by mind, it's mental. When we discover this world, we shall find the solution for every problem, the cause for every effect. And since the world within is subject to our control, all laws of power and possession are also within our control. Refer back to the sacred wisdom of the Horti, this particular scroll, and it goes into it. Panda Bhagavan goes into it on this particular scroll. If you can see that scroll, if you get it, the sacred wisdom of the Horti. Eight, the world without is a reflection of the world within. Anything that's a reflection means it's an illusion. What appears without is what has been found within. The world within may be found infinite wisdom, infinite power, infinite supply, infinite, it hasn't got it here, affirmation of all that is necessary, waiting for unfoldment and development and expression. If we recognize these potentialities, these powers, in the world within, they will take form within the world without. Go ahead, smell. You're tying to the eye. The eye, see an eye? Okay. Not all see an eye, not a beautiful eye, you know, but a natural eye. Right. Basically, he said also, you never see you, the real you. Right, yeah. Meaning that the eye goes to see upside down. Yeah. If we are first that's right yeah so therefore we never in this realm we've never seen the real people that we see here yeah it's all an illusion mm. i mean so what i'm saying that you to the light of the spectrum mm. so i'm saying in the math paris book he kind of stimulates what the eye does in terms of flip, flip mode what we see that's right so i'm saying in terms of the eye yeah why is the one they create the eye to make an illusion from this realm. Yeah. Um, the, our physical eye was has been so constructed so that we'd be able to navigate our way on this physical plane. However, on the spiritual plane, I use that word for lack of a better word, or the etheric realm, we know we know. I was, we have the senses that we have here on the physical realm, what we see here, taste, touch, and smell. We also have that in the non physical realm, in this, in this etheric realm. However, the difference is that our means of perception is not channeled for any one channel or like from your eyes or from your ears, it's your whole body is a receptor for receiving or a transmitter or a transceiver, the whole body in that, in that realm. So now what that basically means is that 
when you made the statement that we don't, we haven't really seen our real selves, all we see is a reflection. The master says, that when you look into the mirror, he gave an example, when you look in the mirror and you stare and you stare and you stare, there comes a point whereby you, you have to ask yourself the question, who's looking at who? Are you looking out at the reflection or the reflection looking back into you? Because they say the eyes is a tunnel to the soul. So the real you really is beyond flesh and blood. In that realm, you would it would be the realm of darkness. You would see, I mean, he's talked about this a few months back, that you, and Ethereum was walking by here now, you just see like a black shadow. It was able to pick it up. It does like pitch black shadow. That's what you would be seeing an Ethereum because they are what's referred to as whole light beings. All light, uh, all color combined manifest as blackness. You see? So it's, we only see what we are seeing, we are seeing by way of the visible spectrum. Mm -hmm which is up between 400 and 700 nanometers. But what about the outside of the visible spectrum? There is existence, or there are, um, okay. there are, for lack of a better word, objects outside of the visible spectrum. There's colors outside of the visible spectrum that we are yet to perceive. All we know is the colors of the, the seven colors of the electromagnetic spectrum of the, of the rainbow color. But what about outside of that? Okay, so the colors outside that we have yet to experience. How would you? Right. Okay. Remind me of, um, you reminded me of one of the more questions I had, um, meaning. How would we be able to? Would we be able to? And if so, how would we be able to think of something that we something that we don't already have knowledge of or talk? How would you be? Able, it's a good okay. question. Go how would you be able to think of something that you haven't already got knowledge of or have been taught? And then, um, how would you be able to think? Of another color that you haven't been taught, or another number, is that going into the language? Right. Uh, you haven't been taught, yeah. or you have not seen a thing. Is that what you're alluding so to? If you, in, how would you be able to think outside the box, per se, or think of something that you don't already know or have been taught about? Okay, you have to be taught to know things, not necessarily. Because remember, we said earlier on that you can you have reached that state of attainment whereby you can receive or upload out formation from the mental that you have never been taught that by human beings. Are you able to relay that? You have the ability and capability to perceive colors that's outside of the seven color spectrum. But how can you relay that to an individual? How can Stevie Wonder tell you what a color is? This color is such and such. Or how can you describe a color to, to say that Stevie Wonder? Stevie Wonder said to you, what does the, what color blue look like? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is true. <laughs> the sky. It's quite a frequency. Yeah. So they're afraid to find the frequency of the colors. Yeah. So if you can actually explain to him what color is. Yeah. All right. But, but, based upon its frequency, because every color has a frequency. And when you say frequency, you're talking about a vibratory tone, you're talking about a tone as well. Does a thought have a shape, a size, a color? That's right. Thought, he says it in the Holy Tablet, thought has a shape, a size, and a color. But when, but when Pana Babi Nanan says, 
thought, has shape, has size, has color, has weight. What is he alluding to? What is he alluding to? Is it, um, is it the feelings? Thought, so thought has shape, weight, size, size, color. Or is he alluding to the fact that even though thought is non-physical, in that realm, it has a shape, it has size, it has form, it has density, it has weight, et cetera, and color, et cetera. In that realm. So, so there are different shapes, size, and colors and things that are different from the physical. So does that relate? Is that in the plane of force? Uh, that will, well, all thought form is coming from the mental. Um, coming from the mental. Okay. okay. Then, as it descends down into, into the physical, its mode of vibration starts to decrease, and then it takes on the color coming by way of the electromagnetic spectrum on the visible spectrum. That's to be able to perceive this as this color, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and you got violet. Okay. So, but outside of that, we have to say, right knowledge or reason out that there are, there are colors that we have not been, we have not raised our level of perception to perceive those shapes, those sizes, those colors outside of this realm. Perception. Also, when, in terms of the, um, when you say outside perception, mean that nothingness, therefore something, it deals with that something or S-U-M. Yeah. That's right. Mm. thing. And then nothing would be on that side of the ether realm. That's right. So therefore, when you use the example of eternity, be of you might not hear it not turn well down on the TV. Mm. You might not hear it, but don't might hear it. Yeah. The frequency is only for them. That's right, yeah. So um, but we do have the ability and capability to we can raise our vibrations up to that degree whereby we're able to perceive sounds that is inaudible to the average human being. Okay. We be, like you see, we're talking about the sun. Uh, the, there's out formation emanating from the sun, and we raise ourselves up to those degrees, we will be able to receive communication that is billions of years old. He mentions it in that scroll there, um, uh, tones, signals, and vibrating. You are going to find a useful name. Yeah, so he mentioned in this scroll. Let me see if I can find it quickly for you all. So we're limitless beings. One hundred percent. Remember that movie, Limitless. Mm. Yeah, that's us. Limitless. We, oh. um, let's see if I can find it. Talked about how the um. Oh, here it is. Yeah, I open it straight away. Page. This is Tom. Actual facts number eighteen, page six, and. Um, hear this now. Okay, this is page number six. I was torn string, which is vibration, actual fact number 18. Uh, let's start from 28, and it reads, not like, not only like wireless frequency, but between individuals and from universe to universe. You have to pick up, out from, you from you, look, 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 that's light years away. Okay, universe to universe. Remember, we live, we are in one universe, and there are multiverses, omniverses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're able to receive and transmit tones, frequencies, and vibrations, and outformation. Twenty nine, and this energy is really here, and coming as electromagnetic waves and particles, radio radio waves, and or energy coming from every angle of the universe. Hear this. From Pare the sun, Pa Najamat the stars, Pa A the moon. And we know that suns are stars and stars are suns. And he says Pa A the moon. So what he's saying here is that we can receive and we can transmit out formation 
from the celestial bodies and even the planets as well. How do we know that? Because the, let's say we take this solar system, system as an example, when the planets are in a certain location around planet Earth, it has an effect on us, whether the, they call it in a state, for one example it's called retrograde. Retrograde means that when the planet is rotating one way, but it appears that another planet, say Jupiter is rotating another way, they call it retrograde. Uh, and they say when that happens, uh, certain energies are emitted to the planet and those who are amongst us who are in tune with that can receive the energies that's coming from there on the moon, on the full moon, we have a ritual, for the sisters, the Maltapu, for our sisters, they call it uh, some moon, I don't know what they're the moon ceremony thing they do. Festival of Colours, is it? Festival of Colours? Or... Yeah, so the moon, the sisters have a moon ceremony because they are very much influenced by the moon, you see, and its influences. So they are like, you follow? So the celestial bodies can have, can and does have an effect on us, okay? So it's got here 29 again. And this energy is really here and coming as electromagnetic waves and particles, radio waves and or energy coming from every angle of the universe, from pa ray, the sun, pa nodule the stars, pa up the moon, 30. Much of the energy is millions, if not billions, billions of years old. They act in ways that you are only now beginning to learn in Wapo, such as what is dark matter and the neutrinos and ethers. Let's stop there. So, let me jump to 32. So, just as radio waves carry out formation provided by the sender, also, the waves transferring energy to you, carry any and all kinds of information to information which is you. Hear that? So we are basically transceivers. We can, we can transmit information and we can receive information. Being millions, if not billions of years old. How long does it take? The speed of thought. That's it. That's how long it takes. What's the speed of thought? Is it 24 million miles a moment? Not a second, say a moment. That is the speed at which we can receive information. So does this information come to us via our thoughts? That's right. Uh, more correctly, by way of the synapses of the brain. The, the, sy the synapses communicate with another synapse as a, communi as a communication network, mm -hmm. but the carrier is called brain natural ether energy. Okay. It's a, that is the carrier that, or the communication, the conduit for information for one side, for one neuron, the way neurons, brain neurons communicate is by way of synapses. One brain cell here, another brain cell, but one brain cell here, another brain cell here or neuron, and the communication, the conduit is the synapses. Mm -hmm. And the carrier is called, we refer to as natural brain, natural ether energy, okay? Which you won't find in the books, or in our books you would, but <laughs> not in these books. Okay. The book you want is, um, right here, natural ether energy. Oh, this one here, natural ether energy. This one here, you want to get this one. Mark up. Uh, for me, since your brother, I want to con continue reading from before I talk to the natural ether energy. Let me continue and finish reading this mm. excerpt here. Then we go back about brain natural ether energy. Then we go back and we'll explain to you about the world within. It's actually all tied in. So, just as radio waves carry out formation provided by the sender, which is us, also the waves, the waves 
transferring energy to you. Carry any and all kinds of information to information which is you. 33, you're receiving them at all times. It's just that you're on the wrong station or frequency and can't see or hear them speaking and incarnating for you. Meaning the beings are communicating to you and you develop yourselves, you can actually see them and they incarnate to you. Okay, like, here it is now, like a radio or TV, it's off. If you are not in tone or in tune with your own station, broadcasting signals that you are built to receive, born to receive from your own ancestors. That is, if you accept others' cultures, religions, way of life, if you carry their names, titles, accept their ancestors' spirit forces called deities, gods, prophets, messiahs, masters, and so on, when you speak in their tone, it's like the radio is not tuned on to your own station, so you only receive their spirit forces who will not help you in any way, yet they will use you to feel the physical spirit forces. 34, you must be in tune with your own bloodline banked to the ancients who vibrate as you on the same station, broadcasting to you, for you, while you see hands at the end of autumn ray, sun rays. Remember we talk about this? That's ray there, you've got the sun rays, autumn ray, and you see the hands there? We have that emanating from our solar plexus, just like that. These are electromagnetic lines of attraction that coming from, in this case, you've got ray, the sun. I see that there, they call it the, um, the, uh, um, the Uraeus, uh, the serpent, uh, the cobra, the cobra, which means that we have to open our penile gland that has to be activated. Okay, so that's what it is represented there. And these are the hands. See the hands of the Ankh there, divine love of divine life. Oh, sorry, what do you, what do you call it? The, mm. the life, the life. Right. Mm. Um, is it the Ankh? What's the Ankh represent again? Um, life. Eternal, eternal life. Yeah, eternal that's it. The screen so we can see it just quickly. Oh, oh, can you see that on the? You see that? Yeah, thank you. Okay. What we're saying is, is that this is Atundre, and uh, and you see the hands are emanating. Um, this can be likened to our solar plex, and uh, and those hands is the emanations that people can receive, pick up, and they can be healed by way of what we are emanating from. As it says in the book, the world within. Go ahead, Zamal. How is that, Zamal? I've got two questions. I was going to ask the first one, but I'm going to ask this one first because it relates to your hands, mm -hmm. the hands of the sons. And you said um, that relates to us and how we emanate outwards magnetically. That's right. Um, that And you were talking about attraction, and that had me thinking to what I was studying about um, divine ether and um attraction things like electricity um things that are there but we might not be able to perceive or see with um okay so could you break down a little bit of attraction because it's an actual rule and law just like electricity well, what's that again what attraction the, attraction the law of attraction yeah yeah um when you say explain what do you mean attraction basically what you send out is what you receive that that that's attraction, you sure. see. Sure. Um, but that attraction, as you read earlier on, is actually has its inception in our thoughts. Mm -hmm. You see, so what we think is what we attract or we bring to our being. Well, so when we talk about attraction, it's all predicated upon our thought patterns, mm -hmm. and those thought patterns can be. Induced by way of the environment, unnatural nature, watching TV and you know, you know, and listening to the you know the environment that we live in has an effect on our thinking and what we are, are attracting. We can bypass it again by our thoughts, by thinking, having right thinking. 
Tower tax amount. Also, so you were talking about we should be downloading. Um, and I know in the computer world, so, um, there's a lot of negative effects from not maybe downloading. You can get glitches, have bugs. You can have crashes if you don't download certain programs. So if is the main download meant to be Rusabatan? If we're downloading things from other sources of information and not having and not being able to um, be grounded in Rusabat, would that would that be negative to our development? Download the incorrect information. Sure. Um, we can download in negative information, negative information or incorrect information. Incorrect. Yeah. Okay. Because we can it. Is it the way we process it? Yeah. What is a person can download? wrong knowledge and no matter what you say to them they're not having it this is how it is and this is how it will be no matter what you say to them no matter what examples no matter how they're not having it what can you do so the ancestors have to say the answer <sighs> Must you say that, didn't he? You just say that, you know, some people you cannot reach, you got, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes he's got, they're in a comatose state and, you know, up to their ancestors to, to help revive them, you know, if, mm -hmm. if, if, they, if, they, if anything, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, but some people we may have received as we growing up wrong knowledge and then something inside of us sparked, been a brother or a sister came and spoke right knowledge to them. And that spark woke them up. They may have, you may have, you may have a conversation with somebody, and then, what's, your, what's your number? You take the number, let me send you a tape. Send the master teacher talking, and for whatever reason, spark something in them for them to start their journey. Yeah, you follow? Oh, okay. Sure. Continue reading uh, from um, this scroll here, Thomas Freeman's and vibration. Thirty-five, and of course, your own energy waves carry out formation into you as information that of Pa Lazaru and the universe and nature. These waves impart this Wumnawapo out formation genetically and psychologically into you. I'll read this again. Of course, your own energy waves carry out formation into you as information gets transformed. That of Pa Lazaru and the universe and nature. This is where this is where it's coming from. Also back. These waves impart this Wu Nawapo right here, out formation genetically, meaning it's imparted into our genes and psychologically into our mental, into our mind into you, you 36, you must become balanced, genetically linked to your own genes, not other races, but with your own resonance frequencies of your own Egyptian, African ancestors linked to the universe and beyond. And then, and only then, will you be able to understand the outformation that you are receiving, if not at a conscious level. Some serious thing there is that oh, I, I believe this is what um, what you eat. I can't take out. What you eat, where as color, things you alter on your body, who you exchange body fluids with, kiss, sweat with, sing with, or along with, all these can move the dial. And like the dial on a radio or channel on TV, the slightest shift, and you get white noise off your own station. So you can't hear nor see the Ethereans. 37. I'm going back to this book of readers. Uh, all this is tying into what, what I'm going to explain to you in a minute. 
37, the super conscious level. You have remember you said that the conscious, that the conscious level, you have the sub subconscious level, and they also have the super conscious level. The guy don't talk about that in the book, that super conscious level, uh, well, I haven't come across it yet. Anyway, this 37, the super conscious level is where you find pa who the oversoul. Our soul, means that the oversoul, pa who meaning that our soul, we have the physical body, we have the spiritual body, the, phys the spiritual body, the, the, spirit the soul inhabits the spiritual body, and the, the soul is linked to a, a oversoul. A, a, these are souls, not just one individual. Uh, these are souls. Imagine you know, that diagram we just saw just now with the hands. Imagine that being that pitch that thing again. Yeah, remember this one here? Imagine that being the center sun. Being the oversoul, pa hu, u, that's how we say it, pa hu, u, the oversouls, and these individual hands being the different souls that are connected to that one oversoul group of beings. Okay, so it can be likened to that. Go ahead, sir. So, who I take it the oversoul is different by race. Yeah. Um, now the oversoul is like a body of souls. It's like the nucleus that each soul is linked into the oversouls. Each soul is linked into the oversoul. Each the word we use is for soul is ba. -a. Each ba -a is linked to ba who the oversoul. Okay. Now, uh, six ether beings and below do not have a soul. Mm. Not to say they can they can inherit a soul, or more correctly, the femi the femi six the Caucasoid females can inherit a soul. From a Nagar, from a Nagar Negroid bell. Mm -hmm. She can inherit a soul. And being that she's Femi 6, once she's inherit a soul, she then moves up the ladder to a Femi 9. The males can't, the Kokosoi males can't inherit a soul. The Kokosoi female can inherit a soul by way of mixing her seed with a Nagar Negroid male. However, if she decides to go back, to her own kind, she should really. She then drops back to. She lost it. Mm. So, but um, from the seven ether and beyond, they're the ones who, who have soul. But let's look at us now, Nadara Nadu. We can lose our soul by living in the image and after the likeness of other than self and kin kind that we can lose our soul not saying that we cannot inherit it back we can inherit we can regain the soul back but again it takes practice you know what i mean we can also strengthen our soul that we already have you know by way of our practices and our lifestyle okay um thank you um so I understand, uh, I understand that where what you're saying and where you're coming from with it. I'm just trying to understand where the older souls come from. Do they come from anywhere? Are they linked to our ancestors in any way? Um, yeah. Is, is, for example, us being in this room, do we all have individual older souls or are they linked? Uh, yeah, the older souls do not have a beginning. Was, is, and shall always be. And we all have a link to the other souls. In actuality, we don't even have our own individual souls. All souls are emanating from the other souls. We just happen, we just happen to have a strand of that, that like a straw. Yeah. Like a, or the, our soul is the conduit 
to the other souls. But that conduit, that soul, like a straw, can be severed. And we lose it, we lose our soul, and we lose the link to the other soul. Your, our most lawful ancestors are linked into that realm of the other souls. Okay? You're 100% right, BK. And it can be our soul that we have can be developed by our practices. What's the bad? Is that methodology for us as Nagara Nadu to strengthen our being? And not just for Nagara Nadu, but what's the bad is for all races red, white, yellow, green, blue, and extraterrestrial. <laughs> is your soul to do with your the breath and um, also your personality? Right, good question. Because so now, the breath we call soul, but we call it rawa, rawa, rawa. That's the breath, rawa. That's what right. we call it. Right. And the uh, the uh, the emotional being we call it ba'a, and the personality we call it um, nafash, and the the e the the uh, plasmatic you we call it ka. Okay, so we have two souls and two spirits. Okay, the, because I'm in tune with yourself, Emma. I was about to say the higher plane. <laughs> I've always been scrolling along because I know some of them asked me la tactile, <laughs> <laughs> and it's got here. Didn't look at the time, right? It's got here. Um, I thought I thought this so anyone could see. This is the scroll called Soul, Soul, Spirit, Spirit, Patarok, Patarak, called Soul, Soul, Spirit, Spirit. I'm just gonna um read an excerpt from here. I've got so many books out here, you know. You know. We could read an excerpt from here. Um okay, mm -hmm. we could read it here. Soul, soul, spirit, Patarak, soul, soul, spirit, spirit one. We come, my beloved, Nawako Haradu. The working children, you asked about the soul and spirit too. Do you know, remember all I said to you of them and you as females and males? Three, the workings, I told you of Ba'a soul and Rawa soul. Four, and I spoke to you about the Ka'a spirit and the fast spirit. Five, and about Ak -ak, etheric being, the etheric double, and the Hu, the over soul. Six, you ask again about these parts of your existence. These are the many sheaths or the many cloaks that, that we are composed of as a physical being. We're not just physical, but we have all these different sheaths or skins, okay, that encompass the physical. One, six, you ask again about these parts of your existence. One, parahud, over being, over soul. Two, parah, ah, the etheric being, etheric double. Three, par ba'a, the creative, expressional being, the emotional being. That's ba'a. For pa rawa, the breath of the living being. So we have two souls: the ba'a, the um, emotional being, or the creative expressional being. It is the ba'a that links us to the other souls. Get that? And the rawa, the breath. Everyone has uh, rawa. Everyone has rawa, the breath. Okay. The living being. Five pa ka'a, the exo cosmic being. Ka'a is another way of not a spirit, okay? The exo, exo plasmic being. Six, pa nafas, the living being or the personality. That's the nafas. Seven, pa khatat, the physical being. Eight, it goes on to pa khabatu, the demigods that are children of pa nadaru, called angelic beings, both agreeable and disagreeable. So this so, so there. Is a little breakdown of soul, soul, spirit, spirit. Oh, Frank, go ahead. Um, I've asked this question before, but I'm still kind of struggling with it. Um, how do I truly know the difference between my imagination and hearing voices from either agreeable or disagreeable beings, whether that's my agreeable or disagreeable being or from someone else's? Because sometimes I feel I could hear them speaking to me, 
but how do I know that's not me just imagining things? All right. Um, or I'm just making I'm making up a voice in my head to portray their disagreeable being, or is that actually their disagreeable being speaking to me? Okay. Uh, when we use, when you use the word imagination, you talk about forming an image in your mind's eye. Okay, but when you talk about hearing things now, you're talking about your you is a a form of um I don't know what word to use of you picking up vibratory frequencies. Okay, to deter I don't know you only you can determine whether what you are hearing is agreeable and or disagreeable agreeable. but hear this now what you are hearing can be your higher being your higher self that's communicating to you to do this or that now i just got the answer when you hear these voices and they give you instruction of what to do or what not to do that can only be agreeable that is something that you have to develop. And how you develop it is by being in, take time out to be in silence every day because it's a development. But got it. But these voices aren't necessarily telling me what to do or what not to do. They're just, they're, they're mocking me to an extent. Oh. Um, but I don't know if that's me creating the, that that mockery for myself because I know I shouldn't be allowing this being to be around me or I don't know if it's me just making up personalities. Like, am I just making up the personalities that we for this to do? I don't know because exchanging DNA with intimate partners, yeah. I know I shouldn't be doing it. And I thought I can hear their disagreeable being telling me, look, I've got you again. Wow, yeah. Um, like, we're doing this again. Mm. My, D, your, my DNA is in you again, and I, I mean you, controlling you, having effects on you. That's yeah. what I hear. All right, yeah. And um, I want to know, am I just making that up? No. Make myself. To answer your question, no, you're definitely making that up. What it is, is that um, when we exchange body fluids uh, with different, with multiple partners, their DNA and their spirit forces inhabits our body. Okay. We have to perform what's referred to as self-exorcism, meaning that we've got to start doing some spiritual practices. One thing that's recommended is to uh, be celibate for a period of time. Uh, actually, you talk, I said period of time, you talk about these four years. <laughs> Yeah, to get rid of those spirit forces. There are spirit forces that are not conducive to our um, to our being as nine ether. <laughs> you, know, so, you know what I mean? So it could be where, because remember that there's intelligence within the DNA, and you could we could have we could mix with the wrong partner or have multiple partners, and their spirit forces come in. And there's a battle, internal battle going on with inside of us. You see, yeah. But cleansing is the master said at least four years. So long story short, I'm going to Shaolin. I'm, I'm, <laughs> so I'm not making this up. No, you're not definitely. I'm really hearing this. You're hearing it, yeah. The the um is the um is the remedy. So it, could there be a possibility I'm making this up and what just to entertain my own head and because I've been exposed to Wusabat and exposed to the knowledge of agreeable and disagreeable beings now for the sake of, I don't know, fun or enlightenment or for the sake of it just to make sense, I'm making up these voices. Is there a possibility of that? Um, there is that possibility. He said something. Just now, um, say something. You said something. Say something just now. Oh, what's the value of me making up these voices because I've been exposed to you so bad? Yeah, that's, that's it. Because I've been exposed to the knowledge, now I'm gonna, yeah, I'm 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the thing you said. Yeah, what it is is that the master said that you've been living a life, a certain lifestyle, and when you come into Wolf's Bat, there are disagreeable forces inside of you that are fighting now to gain control because now you've been exposed to Wolf's Bat. They are losing their grip. These spirit forces that's inside of you are losing their grip. Master says that, and then there's now an internal battle going on because they want, they, they know that they're losing control of you. The more you stay on Patara, Patara, who's the bat? Those forces become weaker and weaker and weaker. We have nothing to subsist off of. So you're 100% right. Now, once you start gravitating to Wolf's about, that's what happens. Uh, I had story. I had st personally I had stories to brothers like that. I've dreamed nightmare this, nightmare that. I go, wow. But yeah, I must have said it in the scroll that these forces are real. I've got one more quickly. Um, if I'm aware about Wusabat and the language that you speak, it, it was about if it deemed as disrespectful if I continue to speak in my South London lingual when I come here. Because I walked in and said, well, go on. Yeah. When really I know I should be saying Rohabat. Yeah. Or sometimes I might say say if someone passed me the mic, but I should say but thank you. Is that right? Tawu tak. Tawu tak. Tawu tak. Tawu tak. It's a female, you say Tawu tak. Tawu tak. Female Tawu tak is the male. Oh, okay. Yeah. What is is that? Remember, Samal, is that. We're all learning and just doing the best of your ability, you know. Man. The more you say things like oh, rahu bad, wadu, tawa tat, tawa tat, once you start, you know, I mean, it takes time, you know. Rome was built in a day, Rome was built when the last brick was laid, you know, but it takes time, you know, I mean, it takes time. Okay, we nearly finished in the class, but I just want to say this one thing here in this book when it talks about the world within and the world without. The world within is a real a bold of existence that pa the daru of all pa mu akh the Ethereans reside in your ancestors pa muslafu our munsawu relatives reside within the world within so it is a state of existence where beings do exist it doesn't mention this book but this is what I wanted to relate to you. If you purchase the book, or if you go on YouTube, and, and you, when the guy talks about the world within and the world without, he is referencing, he's not referencing, but it is, it, it can be correlated to the Ethereans that reside in the world within and can interject into this world without. You follow? So the world within is an actual realm or state of existence where participation is actually occurring right now as we speak in that realm. Okay, so this is the next level of when you're reading, this is how we got to uh, be cognizant or be aware of that when you're reading things that talk about the world within, the world without, and then you talk about that realm or that state of existence where beings actually reside in. And we, being we are physical and spiritual, we are in the world without and the world within, we can have, we can have that direct communication to those Ethereans on your ancestors, because your ancestors are in that etheric state. They are non-physical, okay? Unfortunately, well, that was the, last, at the end of the show. We have another class. Please, next. I don't know if you answered the question on Telegram already. Um, oh, what, in the chat. Sorry, um, what's the, I can't see that. What's the question? Um, can your ancestors come in the form of other people? Oh, uh, the answer to that is the yes. Family. Oh, your ancestors. Okay, from Nathaniel. Okay, um, yeah, your ancestors can come in the form of other people. They can come, when you say other people, in those, it can come to your relatives. They can communicate to you by way of other people who are related to you by way of your bloodline. 
be not only your immediate family, but also let's say cousins or things like that. But so um, they, the master says that they can come through other people to relay information. Yes, they can. I talk from experience. They can come to people who are not even related to you, but more than likely as nine ether beings. You as a nine ether being can receive a message from your ancestor from somebody else, especially somebody who, who knows your family, a family friend. They can transmit a message to you by way of them. So the answer to that is yes, the ancestors can communicate, can relate a message to you by way of somebody else. Yes, the answer is yes, to her. Can I, can I ask a question with that, what you just said there? Because I had an experience where I had a, 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 a European man um, come to me, but in that time when I was a Christian, I associated it as an angel because um, the situation that he helped me out of a situation and he disappeared before, before my eyes. But you were saying that they normally come to you as nine ether being, can they come to, and that he wasn't related to me. So what what would that person have been? Right. So was that a man who sold you the house at the bank? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I might remember that. Right. Yeah. When you say angels about that, remember, when you use the word angel, all it means is messengers. And they come to give you a message. So it's not an impossibility because you are a testimony that you can receive uh, messages outside of your race as well. That is a, without a doubt. You, know, you are a testimony to that. Yeah, because he didn't give me a message. He actually helped me. Yeah, so, yeah. and you, because obviously you said like Ifa. And I've had a couple of um, European, this that experience uh, come to me before. And I have, have had black people as well, but. I just want to know if that was an angel or, or E.T. Yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. All the above. <laughs> so always remember that when people use the word angel, it's nothing more than the Greek word angelos, which just means messenger, okay? to relay okay. a message or to help you on your journey. And not only that, before we close, there are, there are Caucasian singers, males and females, who sing, if you close your eyes, you thought that was a white person. So how does that work? Because the master says that there's been many mixing in. Think that's black people, you mean? Now to what? You, I'm talking about uh, you can have um, a singer who is a Caucasian, man and or female, but sings like a black person. And if you close your eyes, you would have thought that that's a black that, that guy or that sister that that guy or that woman is a, is a, is a Negroid. But you open your eyes, what? I didn't know that. You know what I mean? So there is, and just because we say that, uh, okay, it's like this, due to mixing in, there are Caucasians who do possess a soul. Well, about that story in the Bible about Gehazi, is that, you know, when Gehazi, um, and it says descendants turned white, and they, were black, um, they had leprosy and the whole body went white. Is that like a thing as well, or? Uh, I'm not familiar with that story. In the Bible, there's a story of Gehazi and the um, prophet, I think it was Elisha, um, that cursed him because he um, took something that he wasn't supposed to take from the king. And he said that he was going to curse his him and his, his um, generation with leprosy. And obviously in the Bible, leprosy in the olden times was that you turned, you were black and you turned fully white and you had to go to the priests and every time you you had leprosy you have patches but then you had to go to the priests and then they'll check and see if that you were cleared and the way that you were cleared of leprosy is the way you went from black to totally white okay uh, i'm not familiar with that particular story but i'm familiar with the one where abraham and uh, not abraham moses um he put his hand in his bosom I only mean, put out those leopards white as snow. This is what they put there. This is what they put in the Bible. I can't remember what that show, the Exodus somewhere. But Moses, he had to show the children of Israel that, yeah, yeah, yeah God speaking to him. And, go, and the children say, oh, show me something. He pushed his hand in that, in that bosom. And but he pulled it out, and it was leopards white as snow. And then when he put it back, it returned to its, uh, its, its, its original color. So, so if he pulled, if he put his hand in his bosom, 
And when you pulled it out, it was leprous white as snow. What color was it before? Before you pulled it out, I mean, put it back in. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I hear that there's a lot of, yeah. So, um, so what they're saying, what they're actually saying is that uh, um, being a Caucasian is not looked upon as very favorable in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers your questions about that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Right. With that being said, we are nine minutes overdue. We, um, we might get a parking ticket or get evicted from the yeah. property. Um, yeah. Yeah. Tell, 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 thank you all for um, thank you all for attending another Wolstabat class. I hope that you you found it very informative and enjoyable. Um, as I did in relaying information to you all, each one teach one. Um, we're here every Saturday uh, on Clubhouse, Zoom, and also here at the Shat 101 Church Street, uh, Croydon, the zero, zero, 01RJ, I'm correct. And uh, next class, next week, will be taken by one of our Zamal, Zamal um, brother, Ustia uh, Ray. If you want to join, um, uh, Wolf Sabat uh, at Nashat. You can also go on our website, nashat.co.uk, or go on United Sevens Worldwide.co.com, uh, is it? Yeah. For more information. Until the next time, Moisar. Wadu. Wadu. Wadu.